Bobby Kotick recently had his final day at Activision Blizzard, and a few employees have spoken out about how they feel about it. Spoilers, they're happy. I tried finding it before I recorded this video, but I know there have been several employees who talked about how excited they were about the Xbox Activision purchase and how excited they are to begin working at Xbox as part of the team because of things like unionization being allowed. And we've seen the effects already happening towards Microsoft allowing that, that to happen basically. But we get a little bit of a peek behind the curtain about some of the other not so fun things that have been happening. So this is from uh, Christina who says, I worked on COD for two years as a programmer at Demonware. Bobby's decisions made our games worse. In my first month, it came out, he threatened to have an employee killed in the all hands that followed. No one wanted to speak first, so I demanded his firing in front of everyone. Obviously, that's going to be very difficult to do in front of a group of people. So major props for speaking up, at least about the situation. Now, I don't know what anybody would be able to do in a situation like that during an all hands. They can't just be like, yeah, OK, we'll we'll fire Bobby. But I do think I do commend this person for actually speaking up and saying something after somebody like Bobby Kotick threatened to have somebody killed. Like, it's a very serious situation. But there's even more than that, if that was not enough. I get that I am very loud and very annoying, and that with my seniority and ease of other opportunities, that affords me certain protections and safety to do such things. But you all need to get on board this train. We all need to revolt, revolt against people like this every time. If I'd been fired, I had several other, other companies hovering in the wings, but this is why it is on senior staff to dig their heels in. Juniors will not feel safe doing that until their leaders do it first. We may not have unions, but we do have power if we work together. Ask the loud question in the all hands. Make it short, direct, to the point, and leave no room for waffling in response. Make it sharp, direct, and do it with clarity and without anger so they can't attack your delivery. They won't answer, but everyone will see it. So she's addressing she's addressing my, my point of like, well, they can't really do much on the spot. But it does say the question was posed and the issue was raised in a public setting. So nobody is waffling about it at that point, except for the people who have to answer the question. Write down what you said, keep notes, because if HR pings you, record yourself saying it in the meeting, if you can, so that you have evidence of exactly what happened, because piss weak executives will take their exposed failure personally, Demonware protected me, but other places won't. Early in my career, an engineering manager doing things like this caused discussions that led to him and his entire team quitting on the same day and going to a new company. They all got offered thirty to fifty thousand dollars more to stay, and they all said no. So solidarity. <laughs> Muting this now due to notification volume. Stand up for your fellow workers. If seniors don't speak up or juniors cannot and junior worthwhile will be gone at the first chance, management like this destroys a company's future workforce. It can have a meaningful effect on juniors too. If this is how they learn, they spend their careers not accepting substandard behavior. Yeah, it takes a lot of guts to stand up in front of everybody and call out absolutely unacceptable behavior. Bobby Kotick doing that, it's not acceptable in any light. And I'm glad he's gone. And I think a lot of employees are glad he's gone also. And that's why when it started coming out around all the scandals that there, there could be a way that Bobby Kotick would get out of the company, that's why people were happy. And if I can find it, I'll link to the specific video. But there's, there's another post also going around. So this is the one where it sort of came out that Bobby Kotick threatened to have an employee killed, right? And I think that was brought up also during the, the hearing. And then there's also a lot of terrible stuff has happened. Like you can go read about it. I, I don't want to get flagged by YouTube, but there was another situation 
where there was a company retreat and a thing happened and that person uh, is no longer with us, unfortunately. So yeah, really, really unfortunate. Now I'm gonna get to the next one, which is about Overwatch. If you like this content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. Uh, well, if you like me telling you about it anyway, obviously the content is very unfortunate to have happened, but Bobby is gone and a lot of that leadership is gone also, which is great. So continuing on though, this one is from Andy Belford, he, him, uh, breaking my silence to share a fun fact. When we planned Overwatch 2 stream launch, my team warned months in advance that we're going to be review bombed. We begged for more information, more details, and more resources to help us with the anticipated influx, all flatly denied. So they knew that the Overwatch 2 Steam launch would be bombarded, and they did nothing to get ready for it. He allegedly cost the team months of Overwatch 2 development time and once blamed a decline in stock price on the game, deflecting scandals during his tenure. This is from Overwatch Calvary. Um, so decline in stock price on the game, deflecting scandals during his tenure. The decline in stock price was probably multifaceted. The fact that Overwatch is something that investors are looking at and the scandal is happening at the same time. I, I think the scandal hit had happened and then there was also negative connotation around the games being released. I don't think you can conflate both to the same thing because investors care about money. They care about the scandals and perception to a point, but at the end of the day, it's about the bottom line. And when they see Overwatch failing, that's a big reason why it went down. Of course, the scandals don't help though. Let's continue hearing from Andy. Moderation of Steam was put on the community team, not a function of community at Blizzard, despite my refusal to want to expose members of my team to that level of toxic content slash posts. When asked whose decision it was to launch on Steam with no additional help, Bobby. This is only one example of the culture codec bread at Activision Blizzard. Shit flowed downstream on usually, usually landing on the lowest paid and most overworked individuals. Management was too busy reacting to wildly, I don't even know this word, vacillating direction moving direction and decisions that made zero sense at the end of everything player experience slash worker meant nothing to c-suite and exec leadership it was all about that quarter's earnings call uh there's also been a release about some of the internal workings where it was revealed that there would be a meeting with your manager and your manager would have to put a certain percentage of employees on a PIP, like it was a requirement that is a business strategy. And then that would often lead to termination so that they could bring someone in. Like, I, I just think that is a terrible way to manage your team to require that somebody be on a PIP. And I believe that manager just said, no, I'm not going to do that. And they quit. I would have to Google a specific person, but I do remember hearing about that anecdotally. Uh, there's more though. This one is from uh, Inverse. I think I saw Bellular mention this first. Here's what it says. This is from uh, Shannon Liao, who said, who wrote the following. Bobby Kodak should have left Activision two years ago when over 1,800 of us publicly asked him to step down, but better late than never. A current Activision Blizzard employee tells Inverse in response to Wednesday's announcement, the employee spoke under the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to speak publicly about company operations. They added, working for Microsoft seems like it's going to be better in every possible way than what we're used to. It's surreal. I mean, yeah, I wish I could find the video for you all where, because there were like several employees celebrating the fact that they're going to get out from Kodak and Kodak Kodak's gone. His last day was like yesterday. So it's going to be, and this article points it out. It's all eyes on Microsoft now. So Microsoft, can they live up to their amazing glass door ratings about inclusion, about uh, allowing, you know, different perspectives at the company and sort of having this really great work culture. Can they live up to that Microsoft standard that glass door has posted? Time's going to tell, and this is going to be a big test for that. A few departures. I think we've discussed that Lulu Cheng Maservi is leaving. Uh, Brian Bolato, the chief administration officer, Julie Hodges, 
Armin Zerza and Grant Dixon, Chief Legal Officer. Oh, they'll all be reporting to Microsoft Gaming Equivalents, but executives are leaving also. We know it's... Uh, I actually can't remember which employees are leaving, but... We, oh, here we go. Microsoft is largely keeping the leadership team of Activision Blizzard in place with some executive level exceptions. Activision Blizzard Chief Communications Officer Lulu Maservi will leave the company at the end of January. Humam Sakanini, Vice Chairman Blizzard and King, will also depart at the end of December. So those are just a few of the departures that we know of thus far. And I want to go back to Spencer, Phil Spencer's original comments about the shakeup. Spencer notes that the leadership teams for Activision Publishing, Blizzard, and King will remain in place with no changes to the structure of how the studios and business units are run. For most of you, your day-to-day -day work will remain the same. It's still business as usual in bringing more groundbreaking experiences to more players around the world at the leadership level. These changes will provide the clarity and accountability that is necessary to achieve our ambitious goals and foster a culture that is welcoming, empowering, and committed to gaming for everyone, he continued. We have an exciting 2024 lineup of games across Activision, but that is the Blizzard King and Xbox Game Studios. And I know that we all look forward to sharing more details with our player communities when the time is right. I am so excited to see how the Xbox run Activision Blizzard is handled. Hopefully employees are allowed to unionize if they want to unionize. Hopefully employees are empowered to do their best work and not under some of the circumstances that we have read about over the last several years. Circumstances that have led to Activision Blizzard being sued by the state of California. Like it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous that it got that bad. Let me know if you're excited about what's to come from Activision Blizzard. I sure am. And I hope the employees are too. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. I hope you like this content. If you already subscribed, hit that like button. Thank you to the members for supporting the channel, allowing me to do what I do here. I really appreciate you watching. Click that join button if you would like to become a member. I am going to get out of here. Check out this video. If I can find the one where I made those, where I found the post from employees when all this started, I will link it there. But otherwise, check it out, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now, everybody.